Saturday, October 24, 2020, surgery day for conjoined twins Abigail and Michaela at UC Davis Children's Hospital. Connected at the head for their first nine months of life, they will finally become two fully separate babies. It's the, one of those cases that captures the imagination. After months of careful preparation, including practice with high-tech tools, rehearsals become reality for members of the surgical team, more than 30 of them. In the operating room that was custom built for this level of surgical complexity, hang detailed plans and timelines, and a portrait that reminds everyone what's at stake. These are our babies. There is a family on the other side that's praying for these little girls, and we can't lose focus of that no matter what happens. The babies had breathing tubes inserted the night before, so the team is ready to begin its long list of procedures from the moment their tiny patients entered the operating room at 7.53 a.m. They know they are in for a marathon. The entire event could take 24 to 48 hours. You're going to move sideways and move the vents out the way sideways. Okay. Pediatric anesthesiologist Raj Damrate leads the team that will monitor the twins' vital life functions and maintain their safety. The twins' shared anatomy complicates the anesthesia. The two children were connected somehow, but we really didn't understand how one child would affect the other child. So there was all this balancing that was happening, uh, and that was continuous. One, two, three, and move. During the surgery, the twins have to be turned over several times, a precarious move. Pull the legs out. They will be turned over a total of five times throughout the procedure. Let the surgeons in to okay. take the heads. Nursing lead Aida Benitez steps out to give the twins' family an update. So they're doing good. I'm giving you a good report card on them, okay? Back in the OR, the team readies for its next steps. Plastic surgeon Granger Wong inserted a tissue expander under the girl's scalps three months prior. Now he makes the initial incisions and removes it. The custom-made expander encouraged the growth of new skin, enough to cover the girl's heads after separation. We'll have that anatomy based on where that suture line is again. The neurosurgery team, led by pediatric neurosurgeon Michael Edwards, reviews their plan one more time, referring to a custom-printed 3D model of the baby's skulls. With the tissue expander removed, for the neurosurgeons, the painstaking and meticulous task of dividing veins and brains begins. They know the most challenging part will be the fistula ligation. That's clipping and dividing a large connection shared between the babies. Hours pass, and then the neurosurgery team makes an unwelcome discovery when they reach the critical step of cutting the fistula. Their preparation had led them to believe that abnormal connection would be plainly visible. Everybody said, well, when you open up, you'll see it. Well, when we got to it, we couldn't see it. It wasn't there. The connection is covered by a tough membrane called the dura, and it can't be seen. Under pressure, they have to make a decision. Okay, do we cut into this dura and try to open it, knowing that there's a big blood vessel moving a lot of blood? Or what do we do to try to coagulate and control this fistula? And so we finally said, okay, we got it got up and do this. They go in cautious and exacting. The wrong move could lead to a massive brain bleed, even bleeding to death. After tense moments, the cutting of the fistula is a success. Benitez calls the twins' mother. I asked her, are you still out front and on the lawn? I went outside and actually delivered the news in person. Yeah. <laughs> outside the hospital, the baby's mother, Lilia, holds vigil, waiting in the company of supportive family and friends. We're just waiting for the great news, which is coming from the operating room, and um, yeah, just praying. Okay, reach in and pull the legs out. The work continues. The babies are lifted up and over again. Blood transfusions are needed. Then, after 3 a.m., 20 hours into the procedure, and nearly 10 months into Abigail and Michaela's lives. Cranial separation, yay! For the first time, there is space between them. This moment is for Benitez to declare for the record. I looked over and they had tears in their eyes and I looked to my right and they had tears in their eyes and I finally choked it out. It's 328. One, two, three, move. It's the first time in their lives Abigail and Michaela are lying on separate beds. Dr. Wong returns to reconstruct the twin skulls and close the incisions. We're glad we were able to accomplish our goal, but we're tired. 7.49 a.m., almost exactly 24 hours from when they entered the OR in one bed, the twins leave in two. 
For the team, a swelling of relief, pride, and congratulations. It's uh, a Herculean effort that, that we've all contributed to. I think everybody will be telling the story of these last 25 hours to everyone for the rest of their lives. Mom is beside herself. I actually thought she disconnected when I called to tell her that she had two little girls as of 328 in separate beds. Um, she couldn't talk, and then she just broke down. The twins will have a long recovery here in the UC Davis Pediatric Intensive Care Unit, or PICU. A new day, a new life, as twins no longer conjoined. When we rolled into the PICU, the sun was starting to peek out over the buildings, and to me, they just looked like angels. The sun hit their foreheads, and I realized this is the handoff. Our job here is done.